Today is Friday, October 27th, 2023. Um, Evanisto, you want to go ahead and say something about yourself first? Well, myself is, I was vice president of, of the Ghetto Brothers right here at headquarters, the doors right here. And where are we? We are on the 162nd, uh, the end of 162nd, the crossroads of Stebbins, what used to be Stebbins Avenue, right? Uh, Westchester and 163rd. And 162 seconds. They all come together right there. And the night. So, we right here. It used to be a green building, uh, green building, right? Green, red, something like that, yeah. So, we had it from there all the way to about somewhere around yeah. here. And then all this was lot. There was a, a, a building up the block. That's where Piano lived in a, a, a chair. A couple of people, right? Over there, there was a church. Right? A That's church. right. There was a church. Across the street? Yeah, across right. the street. But it had also, like, a lot that I used to run from my building on the other side. And I used to come out here whenever right. they tried to chase me because we had three ways out, four ways out. Cops could never catch us, you know? You could either go up and go come out on Prospect, come out to, to 960 uh, in the front. You can come out this way, you can come out one one tunnel and you go to the out the other building or if you keep turning around you go all the way at the end. It was a it was a, a little a little the Murphy's cleaner, the roof. So we used to have a window, but we knew how to get up to the roof from the window because we had spots. So we just run and we would get away from the cops. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's say let, let's uh, let Armando uh, introduce himself to it. All right, my name is going. Armando. I used to go by the name of Cisco. I was president of the 12th division of the Ghetto Brothers. And where was the 12th division? What was Our the division was on uh, 165th between Concos and Walton. Okay, okay. You know, but we all used to hang out on Girard Avenue and 165th. That was the main. But I. I we had a, a club in a, an apartment building on the third floor, a uh, four-room apartment. And that was a clubhouse. So when I used to come over here all the time to see Benji, you know, I had to. Yeah, 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 for <laughs> He sure. was my president, you know. So, yeah, that, that, that was me, man, but nothing. It doesn't look like anything that I remember. <laughs> There's nothing here that it used to be. It's all new. It's so strange being standing here and, you know, trying to remember how it used to be and how it is now. It's very strange. Absolutely. Extremely strange. You so, know? anyway, let me get back to the headquarters, right? When I got into headquarters, it was nothing there but maybe a few chairs, right? And and the old box milk, milk uh, the old milk, milk box Milk cartons, thing. Yeah, milk things, thing. yeah. Right? And, and you had one area that you go down, and the other area that you went to the back, this part right here. Which that's where I got the picture. I took the picture against the wall. I, we had, I was vice president, right? We were hanging out, we were hanging out right here in the car. Right? So Charlie wasn't around because the military took Charlie. Yeah. So I was standing like this. There were some guys there. They were doing some karate moves, playing around. So one guy asked, asked Yellow Benji, now that, you know, now that Charlie's gone and you're the president, who's your vice president, right? And he went like that, he is. And I said, oh shit. He right. chose me. You know, he chose me. So one I know that one of the other somebody says something and this guy Benji had some boots on and he gave him a sidekick, man, that slammed the guy against the gate. Right? Never to question whatever he said. But in any event, we may I may I had some experience with Serra in acquisition, right? I set up a meeting with the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico. We, it was me, Benji, Robert, I believe, was there. He's still alive, right? And maybe two other guys, two, I think it was Felix and somebody else. We went there, and I took a shot 
Where was it located? The in Colorado? Manhattan. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. in Manhattan. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I went and I said, look, we, we're the Ghetto Brothers. We're, we're not really about violence. We're a peace gang. We have a center in the South Bronx, but it's empty. And we're trying to get some. We're here to see if it's possible that you could donate something to our center, right? For some, for, say, and, and the meeting went well. You know, uh, Yellow Benji spoke, but I did most of the talking, right? We came a week and a half later to two weeks. I'm inside the club. Some guys called me outside. And a big truck is right here, white. I remember it was white. They tell me sign. You know, they tell me sign. I signed, and then a bunch of, of the pool table came out. Ping pong table came out, stereo came out, uh, 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 TV came out. You know, we had chairs come out. A lot of stuff came out, you know, and then, and it was under my name, really, because I'm the one that signed for it. Okay? So now we have a center going on. Okay? Now we have a center going on. Now we have a lot of people coming out, in and out. So I was taking the colors off, which Armando's club didn't like. You know, they didn't like the red, the black barrettes, you know, because he has his personal issue because he's Cuban, and that's something that he told me was against, you know, right? Because I wanted to become, like the young girls, have a social club, become more organized, have more structure, get the name of the uh, gang away from us. Yeah, uh, so, you know, Benji, you know, used to back me up in anything I used to say, right? So I took the labels off the members, right? No more warlords, no more shit like that. They'll get a brother staff, right? Black Benji was head of security, okay? Because he used to look out for the Ghetto Brothers a lot. The day let that train, another damn train go. The day, the day that he died, right? We, I was in headquarters, right around the middle. I was addressing the ghetto sisters and ghetto brothers, right? Playboy runs in, so there's some guys coming down, okay? I came down and I was ready to go. I was, I took a couple of guys ready to go. Find out what's going on. Black Benji stopped me. He said, no, you stay here with and, and, and take mine the club. I'll go see what's going on. At that moment, he made the decision to go. Right, because I was going to go. Now, I had a long um, army jacket, right? And I had my, 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 red, my red star. And that uh, the red star was our opposition to the system and the way it was treating us, you know, in the community. Because we had a sweeping campaign, a food program, Black and Spanish history, right? We had self-defense classes. The Black Panthers would come out. The Young Lords would come by. They were all educators. Remember, we were like 16 years old, right? So what happened was the same the same Playboy ran back in, right? When he ran back in, he said they jumped Black Benji. Everybody just ran out. They got him in the old Lincoln, right? And that's what we're gonna talk about now. Now we can go over there. But remember, those who doubt me, because I started the, the ID cards. The reason why I started that, because the cops were stopping gang members and they were saying they were ghetto brothers. Cops didn't mess with ghetto brothers, okay? Because we had some cops in the ghetto brothers. They thought we didn't know it, but we knew it. Wiskovich was one. He was tight with Benji. Whisker bitch. I guess maybe because of Jewish thing or something like that or whatever. Because I never knew he was Jewish until somebody told me later on. You know what I mean? Yeah. He never mentioned Jews because we hung out tight. You know? And he 
question you got. Any questions that you have? Uh, no, not not about this, not about this site. No. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. all right, okay. So let's 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 go to the next site. Or we can go right to the corner, and I can walk and explain right there. Okay. What happened? Okay. I want to know if you were here. Huh? You were here when all the gangs came over here? Okay. Now you'll be right here. You'll be my boy. You told him. You tell the story better than me. Okay. This is what happens, right? After they jump Black Benji, a lot of gangs start showing up, right? Right here in the middle. Imagine this full of gang members, all this right here, all this area, all this area, all this area. The first one that came to us was the Black Falcons from 183rd Street. They're the first one that got here, okay? In a matter of moments, this was full. Fort Apache, it was Sergeant Martinez from Fort Apache. He had a black mohair suit or whatever it was, that type of suit, right? And I, Benji wasn't here. I sent for Benji. The minute I found out they jumped Benji, I mean, they, like yellow, black Benji, I sent for yellow Benji that he was up the block. He was up in Tiffany and Fox Street up there. He did come right away. He came right away, right? Imagine this area full of gang members, man. All this area. Sergeant Martinez did not want to mess with too many gang members. Like, even though they were known for ruthlessness and all that stuff, for the Apache, the movie was made, all that stuff, right? Pero, you know, his mother, when Benji came, I was, we were already sitting, I was sitting, I was standing right, right about there, right? Sergeant Martinez here, Benji came, he started talking from here. Benji's mother was right there. Right? As we, uh, uh, Benji took over the, the talking with uh, with Martinez. He begged him not to fight. What happened was that his mother, his mother said, you're not going to bring him back. You're not going to bring him back. Please. Don't do nothing. She begged us not to fight, not to take revenge. <laughs> now, after, after, after that shit cleared up, a lot of people started, you see, I get people, because nobody know what happened to Black Benji's girlfriend. She didn't have nowhere to go. And I'll challenge anybody on this shit. People that wasn't there that want to take credit for bullshit. You know, that they did this, they did that. That's bullshit. Because they wasn't here. You know? Because what happened to his girlfriend? She didn't have nowhere to go. She stood in my house. See, because I got two sisters. <laughs> you understand? Because, you know, she was left out because she depended on Benji. So she stood with me, you know. And, and not nothing, no disrespect or nothing. I just gave her a place to stay. Okay? calm down, the peace treaty happened. Okay, I know I went to a meeting there, or two meetings, and that same, because I remember, you know why I remember? Because that was my welfare center. And I remember telling the guys, as we were going to a meeting, I, that was my welfare center, and I got a check there. You understand? That's how I knew that I went there. You know? Okay. 
But again, I was young. I had my beret. I had while I have a picture of me in headquarters. That picture with Geraldo Rivera. That will that will shut so many people up. Okay, and there's a lot of they wrote after that meeting. They wrote about me on the post. Okay, there was a an albino uh, guy with like a black guy with red hair, kind of in spots. He was the reporter that and he used to he described me by my name and then the guy the little guy with the whiskey mustache and the gold teeth. That's the way he described me. That's the way. That's the way I had baby hair. You know, I had baby hair. And when you, if you ever see that interview with Geraldo Rivera, you will see that I have baby hair. So, for those that said, whatever meeting it was, you know, because it was so long ago, but I know I went to a meeting over there. I know I spoke in that meeting because I was quoting. And there were multiple quoting. meetings, so, yeah, know, people don't always remember that. Yeah, but. yeah. So, you understand, now, now we couldn't, there's a, we used to fight over there, too. Goes down and comes out on the other side. And that area where, where as kids, when you play softball, right? You know, but we need to fight there, and then we need to fight there, which we'll go and look and take that over. The schoolyard up there, yeah. right? Uh, you want to take the car? I better take the car and I'll leave yeah. it there. Right? Yeah, I think so. Amanda, you might want to hear this. Okay, you see right here the building. You see it's a hill. It, uh, you see around where where the the, the, the bar starts. But yeah. well, that's where my window was at. Right here, I just went right here on the first floor. Right, and it was right here. And Tatito still lives there. Remember, I called him Tatito. He said, "Oh shit." Yeah, yeah, he walked Nobody by. ever called me day. that, you know. So here, till now, right there was a green building with David, the guy from the guitar. And, and, and Bull used to live right there. I think it was like greenish building. Right here was the courtyard. It was a rep. The white balls, right? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and yeah, when you yeah. went inside, it was round like that because it was two buildings, right? We used to play a lot in there. We used to have fights from here to across the street, snowball fights. Yeah. We had a thick ball team there that had one. Around the corner had one. But when it came down to it, we were all one, 163rd Street. You understand? So, I think Bull didn't remember me when he met me in the view, you know, when Black Bear, you know, Benji Fat died, that I went to the view. And he didn't remember who I was, but I remember him. He used to live right there. David, the long haired guitarist, and that's where they met. Here. Because I'm gonna show you where, where we first seen the Melendez brothers. Okay? It's down there on the corner, right? Yeah. Let's go. We go take the car. There used to be there used to be a a, 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 a a grocery store, right? It was a pretty pretty big one, right here with a big door. I was coming out. We used to hang out. Remember, this is our neighborhood. Yeah. Used to get high. What's the intersection right uh, here? This is a. No, it's it's called this seven, now. But it was Stevens. Yeah. And 163rd Street, okay? Yeah. Right here, I'm coming out of the store. And right here, squatting down with these three little kids singing Beatles songs. Right? And I say, oh shit. You know, they sound good. And I told my boy, yo, come on down, man, hear this shit. The guys came down. They got sodas and candy from us and all that shit, you know what I mean? They're not stupid, but that's... <laughs> but this, they sound just like the Beatles. To this day, to this day, I listen to Beatles songs, and you can ask my lady, who do I hear? 
the Ghetto Brothers. That's who I hear. I don't hear the Beatles. Because my anger with them was that they never expired to be nothing, the band. Only only temporarily. Because right there, that, right there with that store that they had many records. Alegre, a Mary Lou Records, Alegre. Right? Right there. And they were the ones that were playing the song, especially from Stogie, the Victor. I saw a tear, which he wrote about his girlfriend, right? At the time. Because I think they only got a few thousand dollars out of that deal. They got ripped off, you know? But we first met them here, and we accepted them to this block. Otherwise, they couldn't come and hang out here. Nobody else did. The Roman kings were right here. A lot of them. Little Johnny, uh, what was the other one? Cause they, I know I know because my, my, my nephew is married to one of the sisters. I mean, one of the sisters, right? Um, it's down. You see, the you know, way it goes down right there? That goes down? So I remember because it, it went down. So they were the younger one than us, but yeah. we were still the one because they from him. You understand? Yeah. But they used to be part of the ghetto brothers. So At one time, they were ghetto brothers because uh, uh, Benji didn't pay him no mind. Johnny, they, they got kicked to the curb, according to what I heard from Speedy. Yeah. You know, they got kicked to the curb, so they decided to go make their own name. Even though they hung up the block from us, and they hung out right here. We still looked out for them. You understand? But that's the way they got to the block. So a lot of people that fucking talk out their ass, I was one of the first ones to walk them up to this fucking block. All right? I was the one. I think he had, and then Victor went out with Pinky. Pinky was a get, vice president of the Ghetto Sisters, right? Uh, so they adopted, and then at the end, Victor was living up, up the block with Candy. She lived on the one of the top floor. My girl lived on the third floor. That's another story, because every time I used to come from school, I turned the block, which in Moon, Moonlight Cafe was in the corner, and I turn and I, you know how you feel somebody looking at you? I felt that shit. So I told my boy Pee Wee from a walk behind me, let me turn and see if somebody's looking. He said, yeah, the third floor of the wooden curtain. The wooden of the nation. I said, oh, okay, and I find out who it was. Now you can't say my name, Evaristo, just like that, right? One day it was snowing, she was coming down to the store. I crossed the street from my block, from the way at my stoop, and quickly I said, listen, why are you always looking at me? She said, well, man, looking at you. She said, by the way, who are you? I said, my, I'm Everest. And she said, oh, when well, she said it again, perfectly, man. So I mean, she was asking questions about it, you know what I'm saying? my sisters became good friends, and, I, and she's still on Facebook. And, 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 and. All right, there's a bench coat right here. There was a bunch of benches here, right? And we used to hang out here a lot. What school is this? 133. 133, 133. that's right. And, you know, this had a lot of have a lot of basketball courts, right? So one day we went to Rumble, right? Right there. Rumble in right there. And it was two our two best men against two of their best men. Who were you who were you rumbling against? I don't remember that shit. <laughs> I know we were rumbling, right? So it was right here, right? So we had a basketball, so every time the cops came by, because somebody probably said there's a bunch of gang, gang members, we would pass the basketball. Like people all fucking around, you know what I mean? When they left, then the shit went on again, uh -huh. right? So our guys were beating the shit out of them, right? One guy made a mistake and threw a chain at the other guy, because he was getting his ass beat. Yeah. And all hell broke loose. We fought, man. We fought. You know? Then the cops really came. They said, we well, run, run right here. Yeah. And they one there. And they also killed Jose here. The Ghetto Brothers, they had nothing to do with Jose. People, I think, already paid the price. You understand? I yeah. think one person's already dead. Yeah. You know, he passed away. Um, I remember I was in Daisy's house. Cause I used to go out with Noray, the Daisy's sister. And Jose, we were all in Serra together, right? And Jose used to sleep under me. 
But I remember one time, you know, when you kick in, you get all your hormones kick up. I was I was doing my thing. So he, in group, he said it. So the staff said, what are you doing looking at him? You know, talk about that shit. Yeah. <laughs> so I kept shutting his fucking mouth. But, you know, I like the guy a lot. He was a dairy new. So well, I, I was in a 310 and a half when the shit broke down, right? But I was in her house when she got the news. And she just ran out, okay? And said, like, she knew what was going on. She just ran out the house, you know? And man, her mother broke down. I remember it like, uh, shit. They were living um, somewhere by Aqueduct. Wow, all the way up there? Yeah, yeah, but they already knew what the fuck was going down. I mean, wow. Daisy probably knew because she ran out the house, and after that, people got arrested. Yeah. You understand? After that, people got arrested. So, this is where we we hung out, basically, all of us right here. We didn't, we, so we didn't have no problem. Sometimes the black spades that were up the block, they didn't fuck with us. Yeah. They never fucked with us. So when I found out that it was a black spade that killed... Um, uh, one of the videos I heard, because yeah, well, I never got the news that Black Spade killed him. You yeah. know, now somebody said that later on, you know, I probably, that was after I left the Ghetto Brothers, because nobody asked me why I left the Ghetto Brothers. And that's simple, because if I got, if X amount of people have the keys to one place, right? Right? Yeah. And you open that place, and that place is fucking empty from everything that you acquisition. And nobody does anything about it. So I got angry, I walked away. I said, I, after I bust my ass, I'm trying to make this place what it is. Charlie wasn't around still. No, Charlie, Charlie was not around for Charlie, that. That would have never happened if Charlie was around. He had to go and hide him for a bit, right? Cause well, I, I know that he was away. I don't know. I think they took him. The, the military took yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about hiding. AWOL. Yeah, because he, he was a wall. That's yeah. right. Yeah, he had a wall. So I guess they caught up to him, and that's when that thing happened. But what I'm saying is, you know, I mean, if nobody makes noise, if my, place, my house gets robbed and I'm not going to do shit about it, there's a problem. And then, like last year, a couple of years back, that I spoke to a certain person kind of put clarity on everything that's up here. You understand? Because I'm not going to say anything about anybody that's not here to defend themselves. But I will put facts on the table. And facts is that if Charlie was here and that, song, that shit got robbed, our headquarters got robbed, all hell was going to break loose. Yeah. <laughs> all hell was going to break loose. Okay. Charlie, Charlie didn't mess around, though. I mean, he was a serious guy when it came and, to that. And on our way home, we're going to stop by where I met Charlie at, right? Because it's right around on our route to go home. But that's what I'm saying, you know. Um, now, because people say, why you walk away? And then Armando made it clear to me, well, why they never mention you? Well, if you're not around, somebody's going to take credit for what you did. Yep. You know, somebody's going to take credit, especially if you did more for any, for the Ghetto Brothers than anybody else. Because I had structure with the Ghetto Brothers. They had ID cards. Yep. They were taking off their lead jackets. We had yep. a, a center, a community center going on. We were moving up. We were moving up. You know, we were getting recognized, right? Let's hope they'll get what I said. You know, um, does leave it. You know, that, so, you know, I'm saying, I'm saying, you know, it was going somewhere, you know? So whatever happened afterwards, you know, like your pants are green, they probably look like a tree. <laughs> okay. All right, he just, okay, I know, he'll go away. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So anyway, let's go to our next spot. All right. Now we're here at the site. Of Black Benji's, where they killed Black Benji, right? Right, right here at this right intersection, here. right? Right here, right there, right there, right? Well, what? Uh, it's Rogers and. It's, uh, 
place. Yep. Back in the days, this was the real gang that ran this the street was the Royal Crowns. There were Royal Crowns really ran this. They were a little older than we were. Um, that was on my brother's time. You know, he was my brother was a Royal Knight. And that was Prospect up there and on the, where we were at, up the, by International, by the International. That was Viceroy, I mean, the Dragon and other shit. I remember the old, old school chats, gangs. Yeah. They had, they, a lot of them came from like Harlem originally before well, they moved up here. Well, probably because of the white boys in Harlem, but no, they had, uh, Horseshoe Park was full of gangs. Yeah, 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 yeah. They had the Mighty Midgets, the Cowboys, the Viceroys, wow. all that other shit. The Horsemen. The Horsemen and man. all that. You know what I mean? That's all was over there, and then up there was the Royal Knights and all that shit. Now, over here, right? They had benches up there, right? Yeah. So we used to hang out there. That's where people were hanging out. That's where Playboy was at. Hanging out with some of the guys up there in that bench, right? So when he seen the guys coming down, he ran quick, because he seen they were looking for trouble. Remember, you could see clearly to all Simpson. All these trees wasn't that, yeah, here. Yeah, those trees weren't in the way. So you could see clearly to where we were at before, right? So that's when he ran in. What I heard was when they got back to me was that when they were coming down, right, Benji stepped to talk to them. And they didn't want to hear anything about it. They started swinging. According to what I heard afterwards, a lot of them really didn't back him up, and then some backed him up, and some didn't. It wasn't a full force thing. Um, that's what I've learned since, but at that time, I didn't learn, I didn't know that, you know? Um, a lot of people say also that it, they came for somebody else. I'm not going to mention no names, but it happened here. So what happens? What happened? You seen the video of me and and uh, and Benji's nephew, right? That Benji used to go, to, his nephew used to go to headquarters, where he clearly remembered me, right? But they didn't allow me to talk, so you know I'm, I'm happy that this place. But this was the the, the site of, of where they killed the man, you know. And it's sad because he still had his colors on, probably that had that has something to do with it, you know, because um, not everybody had the money to buy for jackets right away, right? Um, so, you know, things came, but this is what happened, but the shit is, they were hanging out right up there. See, they took the benches out, but there were benches right here, there were benches up on the other part, there were benches on that side, and there were benches on that side, and there were benches on that side. I think there used to be benches even like a year ago. I remember there being benches here not too long ago. Yeah, not, not too, too, too. Yeah. I yeah, sat well, on I them. The they take most of you, I, yeah. you don't hang out. Yeah, that's what it is. You they see, most this is the first, the, and you're right, the first time we came, they did have they one did bench have up there. And I was here like six months ago and they had benches. No, no. I think. No, no. Maybe I came down to these benches. Oh, you know what? They, I think they have benches right maybe here in the bottom. Yeah, in the something. bottom they have benches. Right? Oh, maybe. That's where somebody spoke. And then, because I know that somebody got real pissed off because I didn't speak. And you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but that's okay. You know what? It always comes out in the rinse. Yeah. If it don't come out in the wash, it comes out in the rinse. Opening over there. I think it is okay. Right there. And we could talk. Where are we at, Evaristo? Right here. We're on uh, 160, 160th and uh, 1010, right? This was my public school right here. This was my public school. And we used to fight. When I first got here, right, it was Puerto Ricans against the blacks all the time. Around the corner, there was a, a the schoolyard that goes in, right? It goes in like that. 
and after school, every day. My first fight was right here, because they got nasty with my sisters, right? I got it. So I was, I, I was right there. So I'm ready to fight, right? You know? So I'm ready to fight, so when I turn around, there was about six black guys, right? When I turn around, there's a bunch of Puerto Ricans behind me. Let's do this. This is 1963, 1965, 1964, 1965. Let's do this. We kept fighting them every day until they gained our respect. Then we became one, right? Charlie lived over there, hung out through here. I, I met Charlie a lot here. We used to hang out in Forest Avenue right there. And I, I had a season one way street right there. Yeah. So, one time I was coming down, because I told you there's a little entrance right there, right? I was going through to come out on the other side, because this is where I hung out a lot, right? We used to play all our sports here, all our sports behind the schoolyard here and everything. Cops come through there with guns like that. Boom, 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 boom. What the fuck did I do? Drop what was in my hand. They took me to Prospect, right? I look like somebody that stole something. I had them bring me back. You know? But that was a scary moment, man. That was, that was like 1972. Wow. Or 73. 74, around there, yeah. That shit, cause I used to hang out here, even though I'm from Prospect. I later hung out here, because this is where all the salsa people, we started began to dance salsa and everything like that. Oh. We all hang out here. Cause we're all part of the projects, which we're going to just go make that little turn and go up and then go home. But I wanted to show you my public school. This was my public What was school. the number of it? 124. 124, yep, that's right. That's where I started getting all my sports. Is it, uh, at, uh, is it a school anymore? No, it's a program. It's, okay. Oh, community. Oh, yeah, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. it's a drug program now. Yeah. You know? And I remember the inside like nothing, man. You still, know what I mean? Still <laughs> Beautiful. My first ping pong so t came out of here. The table was oh, about like you, this. I remember you telling me yeah, about that. Yeah, the table yeah, was yeah, about yeah. like this. Yeah. And I used to hook it a lot. And I, I didn't know I was playing in a tournament. Yeah. So the, 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 the gym is on this side all the way up, right? They, they said, we all blow the whistle. We got on one knee. And they came and they presented me with the... You know what I mean? I go, oh, shit. Wow. It's better that I didn't know I did as good as I did. Yeah. yeah. And the softball team we had. Yeah. I, I'm like the only one that put it over the fences. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Right? At a 13th team. 13th team. Yeah. I'll play for the San Silla. The home plate is over there. You see all the way over there? Yeah. And, and it was, it didn't have grass. It was just concrete. I hit a shot. Almost moved me right there. About I just missed about that much. That one there, right? That school. Wow. I hit it over there. I almost moved it over there. I put it in the park many times. Yeah. A park around the corner. But I hit that shot from over there and almost moved. That's a long. Uh, the long. So they asked me where did I get the power from? A little motherfucker. I say it's technique, then power. Yeah, how, how you hit it? Remember, I play, I play, I play minor league in base in Puerto Rico. So look, on both sides, I put it on this side, I put it on that side. The out of 13 teams, I'm the only one that got it over the fence a couple of times. And you ain't seen me play paddleboard, so you ain't seen the power I have playing paddleboard. But I always tell you guys the story. Now you have an idea, a visual of what I'm talking about. For sure. You know what? Where's my phone? That's the store. It needs to be manicured. Right there. What was it called? Manicured. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right? There was a time that I think I told you a story when I was on parole. I used to sell. I was down the block on 161st Street. Uh, the old YMCA, there was a probationary place, right? And 
somebody dropped a dime on me because I used to sell hash, right? So he said, you can go because I know you're going to have, you're, 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 you're about to have a, a, a son that's going to be born, right? Fine. I never went back. I was hanging out right there, right? That was a parking lot, right? Right there. Okay, yeah. So everybody used to play. This is a nice known park right here in McKinley. Play in basketball, right? But what happened was, this cop car is coming by. Coming by. And I'm there with Joe getting, smoking a joint, drinking my 45. And right there, you see the park? Right there, the park? Yeah. Winston, my, uh, the African American friend of ours, went over and said, Look, there's some two white boys over there. You can't see them, but they can see you. Yeah. I ain't paying no mind. But there was like eight cop cars that passed. And I said, They're going to bust somebody, Joe. Yeah. I did that at the beginning. So when I seen the white guy, my PO, I, I cut through the hole. I said, Joe, that's for me. Get away from me. Oh, I remember this yeah. story. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, 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 I went right through there. And they came out of the fucking all over with guns like that. Boom, 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 boom. And I had the court. The court. I said, okay, you got me. He said, no, I know I got you. And they, they smacked the, the beer from me. And I got locked up. And they, sent me, they were sending me to Woodburn. So on the way there, I read my horoscope. And it said I was going to take a short trip. That's fucked up. I was already on my way to prison. That's fucked up. But here's what happened. Okay. I used to plug, where's the light pole? Right here? I used to have a 40 watt JVC radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to plug it right there, right? And the whole fucking build, the whole, everybody used to hear the fucking music. Everybody used to hear the music, man. But this shit was like, we had the, the softball team, the Saceros. From here, the best team out, man. That's why I told you I hit the biggest shot out. I'll show you on the way home. All right. I want you to take a picture of it to see the distance. Okay. This club right here, this door right here, is where we used to go in for the Colgate Garden. This, this building right here was called the Colgate Gardens, right? I think it was red. It was red and white, right? Um, which I didn't say that in the other one. And what it was is that uh, this was a Latin hot spot. It was a nice spot, man. The buildings are here the same way they were. This whole block hasn't changed at all. We used to come dance here and have a ball. Let's say um, uh, um, in, the, in the like late 60s, middle 60s to um, 70s and, and early 70s. Right here, Colgate Gardens, man. The Colgate Gardens, we used to have a ball here. You know, it was a nice, decent club, you know. You go inside, when you're going through here, it was a bar situated, a dance hall situated. It's pretty big inside, don't, don't let it get fool you, all right? But this was a nice hot spot back in the day. This is a part of my history right here. Where are we at? We at 165th Street and Fox Street, right? This is uh, this Simpson right here. This is Fox Street, right here. Simpsons the next block, right? There's 165th Street. Remember, the guys that came down to fight, they came from here. And they walked down this way. With Black Benji, right? Yeah, for yeah, Black yeah, Benji. Yeah. They just walked straight down this way. That's how we got. But one time they came after me over here. Okay. And I was in the truck over here. And what they did was, you know, they came and something got me out of the club. And I seen a bunch of guys coming, and I calmly walked until I got to here, and then I jetted. And I just snuck on the train, and I heard them looking for me down on the ground around there. I don't know what the fuck I did, but, you know, they were after me. But here, on this corner right here was the uh, first time I ever had, uh, well, with all that stupid music. Uh, chicken, uh, The, the breaded chicken with cheese, chicken parmesan. Oh, chicken parmesan. First time I had it was right there. But I was also homeless here. There used to be a lot right here. And that's when we all used to. Um, they had some houses and that. And we used to just sleep in the streets. 
Yeah, right? sure. I now, my mother was a numbers lady from all this area, right? All this area right here, right? When I jumped off the third floor, it was a building right here. Next to this one. We went up to get high, right? And I probably got paranoid a little bit, and I jumped from the third floor. That's when I broke my leg. That's when I broke my leg in two. I jumped right. It was just that behind here, it was a lot, right? A lot. And that walking through that lot probably twisted my leg back and forth and messed it up. Because I got on the bike and I drove, you know? Yeah. But when I used to dance Latin, we used to dance right there in the schoolyard. Oh, sure, sure. We used to just bring the music there and we used to dance and have a nice time, man. It was a good block. But I have a lot of history on, I have a lot of history here, you know, and I just have to remember and be accept, and accept that when I was homeless and I was doing drugs, this was one of the areas that I did drugs with. Oh, okay. Now, mind you, I helped the kids when they were younger, so when they got older, they used to help me. Yeah. They looked out for me. You know, that's why my job was just to sweep the front of that that little club right there that used to belong to Nene, and he used to pay me. And I used to do the errors, and I used to get paid. Meanwhile, I used to look out and be with my mother around here, because my mother was always running the numbers around here. You know, there's nothing all but beauty solid, beauty parties all around this place, you know? So this is part of my history here, my drug history. Yeah. You know, and then my early history, that's good. You know, when I was a kid, played handball in that park right there. I, was, I played handball wherever I went, I was good. You know, but then when I played paddle, I was even better. You know. Okay? Great. Oh, wait. Oh, right here. We used to hang out here, right? And we used to sell drugs right here. And okay. the train's right there. And the, we never gave a, gave a fuck about it. And where are we at? We are on uh, Kelly and Westchester. Right? Kelly and Westchester. And this is the spot of New Jack City. The heroin, not the crack. The heroin, even though they sold crack here too. So what happened was that we used to sell here in the store and I used to facilitate. One time they came and uh, the store, we used to hold our guns in that store. Yeah. Oh wait, say that again? We used to hold the guns in here. You famous? You know, one time one guy got loud with another one. He said, I'm gonna go home and yeah, I'll be right back. And when he came, he came down that block, right? And the person he had a beef with seen him coming down the block. Somebody else said, look, he's coming. He came, he grabbed the gun, and he went, and he shot the guy. The guy was bouncing, it looked like he was dancing, and I didn't know, so another guy grabbed him, put him in the car, and just took him away, okay? I came, I was getting high right here. Right, I used to put my drugs with a metal thing, a metal thing, right behind the, the metal wall, right? Right here. And when they wanted something, I would grab it. But I was, it was dark, I went around, and I was getting high right here. I was getting high right there, right? The cops came and raided everybody. Wow. Right? And I stood quiet. Hoping they didn't come into the basement, and they didn't. And I got away scot-free. But they looked out for me. My job was only to get high, right? I used to go up to Prospect and get, and, and get the customers and bring them down because we had the best drugs. We had the best. It's just that there were a lot of people up there. I used to sometimes get not out by that light, a light pole right there, you know? but it was good. And I used to be there. So people ask me and I would send them this way. I would get paid more than the guys that were selling it. Believe it or not, I was getting paid more than the guys that were selling it. And my job was just to get high. Yeah. Because in the morning he would come here at 8 o'clock. When we open up, he said, here, do your thing. I would come in here and do my thing and then come out and start doing my business. He, he would buy, one of the managers would buy the coffee for us and everything like that right there. And we would start our day. You understand? 
and that's just part of this history. Because I remember, I think I mentioned it to you, right? You did, yeah. So now I'm showing you. Okay, sure. Okay? And that, that's where I used to hang out in the little beauty parlor right over there. Right? And she's been there forever. <laughs> but this is, this is, my mother used to walk all this. From where I live. It, it, this, it was this right here, right? We had a club here. All this club, I think it belonged to two cops. Uh, Bobby and somebody else, I think. And we used to hang out a club. Like the same thing I wanted to do with the girl brothers they did here, yeah. right? So when they did the cross and the switch play, most of the guys came from here. Mm. It was Tom Ward Enterprises, and they paid us as, you know, doubles, or I mean, uh, just to be in the movie, $125 each. Wow. But I remember the day when, you know, the, the my man used to come early and when I, we got up in the, the old mailboxes and I, we got our check and we all came out. Like that, you know what hunting right out, we were getting stoned out of our mind. But this is it right here, this is the area right here. You know, it was a nice club, they kept it right. But this is where they got most of the guys. Also, I did a Christmas in the Central Park. We did a, a commercial, Christmas commercial also. And uh, 110th Street, the old skating rink on the other side by the pool. I think it's the pool now, whatever it is. Yeah. But that's it. That, that's basically, I wanted to tell you about this spot right here. Okay. But, Because I know I've been there and I was involved in the movie. I was pretty young at that time, you know. And, and um, they they had me with the mama. I thought it was Italian at the time, but they know they are, they were Spanish, Puerto Rican. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And, I, and I, just, I don't know why I got confused, but since I was a, a light skinned, curly haired little kid, that's they stuck me and they stuck my Angel Garcia, my brother in law. They, they, he fell into a hole in Brooklyn in a, in a, in a scene they did with the burial. They were looking for him. He was inside one of the holes <laughs> where they buried people. He fell into it. Wow. But I couldn't go to, I couldn't go to Chicago and the other places because I was too young. Yeah, sure. And I had nobody to export me, so I couldn't do those parts. But that's, that's it. We got it from there. 